you doing? Good. Okay. So, you've been following me, watching my stuff. From I have. Read my books. I have. Listen to podcasts. Mm-hmm. Just started a couple weeks ago. Yeah. So, how can I help you? Okay, so I've been in the business about eight years. I started in uh, January 2010, which probably wasn't the best time to start. 2010 was a very difficult year, but mm-hmm. um, I did very well because I knew a lot of people. I, I did okay. Where are you uh, selling? Roberts Brothers. I sell all So, Mobile? Uh, Fairhope. Fairhope. You know, we have an office at Fairhope, we have an office in Nablus, and now we have an office down here. Mm-hmm. So, um, but I uh, started with Rock Brothers, uh, did, did enough, well enough to where I, I thought I was doing okay, but uh, unfortunately I think I learned a lot of bad habits, I didn't, um, I didn't, uh, I, I wasn't doing things correctly to get to where I wanted to be, but just by the sheer volume of people I knew and about my willingness to get out there and drive, drive hard, uh, I made a good living, paid my bills, but uh, recently, um, close the doors. Things have changed, you know, with all the new agents coming into the uh, into the business. Yeah, hundreds, not hundreds, and uh, so people that uh, I guess maybe I took for granted in the past, um, you know, are are, are are using other realtors. Just uh, I don't know. I, I've got to change my game plan. And uh, I read um, read your books. I've been watching YouTube videos. I've I've been um, following them, everything I can. And what really resonated with me above all else was the fact that you were committed to working with property owners that's you know you you, you know like in the past we said well you should go after renters because maybe they'll be one day they'll be buyers or or go after for sale by owners or expired or or all this stuff and that's fine but it just it made a a ton of sense to me about developing relationship with property owners and further to that the script when you you called and I I don't know if it was on a but in your book or one of your YouTube videos where you had said you just called him, you said, Hi, my name is Ricky Caruth, mm-hmm. uh, Green Max and Orange Beach. How are you doing today? Mm-hmm. Pause. Mm-hmm. I paid attention. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then uh, talk about the weather a little bit, and then just wanted to say, Is there anything I can do for you? Mm-hmm. Or something along that effect. I would have to yeah. find my script, but, but it, it really resonated with me. Mm-hmm. You know, I took Brian Bikini's course two years ago, and it was a lot of exciting stuff, but it was too much. Mm-hmm. You know, it felt to me like it was just a little bit overwhelming. So, what I need in order to to be where I want to, where I want to go is uh, I need a structured plan to kick me off. Um, if you show me how to ride a bicycle, I will get on the bike and kill myself getting good at it. But I need that first step. To mm-hmm. here to talk to you. Well, um, first off, I think that. So how do you get leads now? Um, uh, social media, uh, social media, prior clients. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I'm working with a couple of people. Right now, uh, one I had uh, I used to work out with uh, at the CrossFit I, I did, and the other one was a uh, is a friend of my girlfriend's. These are two clients I'm currently working with. Uh, a couple other ones that were friends or, or references. That's so outside of people you know and social media, how are you getting that's it. clients? That's it. Honestly, that's have, it. Have you tried anything else? Why not? Um, like I said, I. Um, I started off, I did well enough. You know, I bought some investment properties. I flipped them, did the work myself. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I've, I've enjoyed some benefits there, but it's been enough to, honestly, for me to, um, those avenues were enough to get me by. And it's just not enough. And I'm, and I'm, and I'm You contradicted yourself. You said it was enough to get you by, but it's not enough. But not now, mm-hmm. not now. Last year was the worst year I've ever had. Yeah. And a prime example of that is, you know, I know, and I'll, I'll, I'll be very blunt, um, Dustin Cole is doing business with people I thought in the past would have done business with me, mm-hmm. but uh, through no fault of, of, of his, you know, he's contacted where I just assumed they were good with me. And yeah, they weren't. yeah. Um, and that's, and then... What do you do to stay in touch with your sphere and stuff? What do you do? How do you keep the relationship? Well, like my top 50 uh, clients slash friends, you know, we're, I'm, I'm, I'm contacting constantly. Uh, I'm just, in, I'm, I'm good with them. They all got Christmas cards. Our Christmas cards. They got, they got, they got postcards from Disney when me and my girlfriend were in Disney in October. Mm-hmm. Uh, things of that nature. And you know, anything pretty, about the market? Um, if they ask. Because it sounds like they just got a Christmas card and a thing from Disney, and there's really not much That's there true. to do with real estate. Hundred percent. Well. Um, you know, 
here's the thing. It sounds like you have a good foundation of like, you know, like the people that you, how many sales did you have last year? Uh, it was probably um, maybe 10. Mm -hmm. It was a little low. How many the year before? Uh, more? Yeah, more. more. Okay. Like, it was like the first two or three I'll tell you why. Okay. You, when, when, you, when you rely on past clients or referrals, your business plateaus or mm -hmm. declines. Yeah. The only way to grow is if you're talking to new prospects every day. Right. So if you just depend on, like, if, if I stopped calling new people, then my business would either plateau or, or decline. Right. You know, it won't grow anymore. Right. Um, I mean, your past clients and referrals only take you so far. Unless you build a, a monster of a business, which I have. Mm -hmm. And I think, I mean, last year was the year I made the least amount of calls, but I made the most amount of money. Right. It's because of all the calls and all the business I did. It's, it gets to a point where it is a monster and it kind of just starts growing on its own. Right. I think I'm there. Right, but I'm scared because <laughs> I lost everything in the crash. Sure. So I don't want to stop because I have that fear, you know, and I never want to go back there ever again, you know. So well, that's 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 where, quite very frankly, that's where I mean, I'm aware of that. I know I need to get out. I need to call. I need to. I, I need to like exactly like you said. I'm very well aware of that. I need the structure. Yeah. I need the. I need the. I need the. Like like your your people you know and stuff. That's just cherry on top. Right. That's not business. Sure. That's just extras. And then social media, that's to build your brand, not not to get leads. Right. You know what I'm saying? Social media is to is to share your message and to build your brand for who you are. Right. And and build that personal brand of what kind of person you are, you know, that's also in business, you know, mm -hmm. in this particular business, you know. So like I did a post yesterday, um, and it was a picture of the beach and it said it was a long post and it was like, Hey guys, I just want you guys to know that I don't care if you buy or sell property on the Gulf. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I work hard enough to where I have more than I can handle at all times. My goal is that if you ever do decide to buy or sell, I want to make sure that you're taken care of. Right. You know, and, and I said, ask around. I have a big reputation of handling clients like their family and going over the top to make the deal happen. Mm -hmm. And stuff like that, and uh, I made a post like that, which kind of like it showed my personality, mm -hmm. and it also showed them that I don't care if they do a deal; I just want to help them. And the last sentence was is is on top of the fact that I don't care uh, that fact that you want to buy or sell. Dot dot dot. I want to know why. That way, I can help you accomplish the real reason why you're doing the deal in the first place. Right. Right. Why are they buying or selling? You know, like who died, what job did they get, you know, sure. all the stuff I say in my stuff. And so, you know, like, uh, like it's a different mindset, you know. And so if you can take what you're probably doing with your, like, sphere, and, and, and which is, like, real personal, the Christmas cards and all that stuff, if you can mix that up with business and then get that out to new people right. in your market, like property owners. Right. You know, the thing is, is... You've probably heard me say all that stuff before, but like, you know, there's an unlimited amount of property owners that'll do business with just you right. forever in your market because of who you are and how your personality lines up with them and how like you're an awesome person, you're, you work hard, you're dependable, you're all these things. Right. You're a great agent. They just don't know it yet because you haven't talked to them. Right. The only thing between you and that is talking to them and letting them get to know you a little bit over time until they get ready to do something. Sure. And then when they decide, you you just happen to be there. You you're like in the shadows. You know, you're just there. You're right. not saying you need to buy, you need to sell. You're just saying, hey, I'm here if you need something. So how often do you uh, and like so say uh, you had uh, you cold called me and I'm on a property and mm -hmm. you know I liked it. Just be, it was the timing was fortunate that I needed to do a deal and we did a deal and then in order to keep up with me what is the mechanism to that are you emailing every month are you every week you doing handwritten letters I mean kind of give me a every week on the same day every week they get an email okay my whole database and is it is it is it uh, market information or uh, is it a template with, is it like a newsletter or, or it's kind of set up like a newsletter but I designed it Okay. I decide what goes in it every week. I spend an hour on it every week. I got you. Figuring out what goes in there. You know, what do I really want to convey yeah. to them this week? Yeah. How am I going to keep them interested in me? How am I going to keep them interested in the market? Okay. 
Uh, I like a big picture up top that catches our attention, you know, and so I have new listings, closed sales, featured properties, you know, uh, okay. uh, an article or something. And so some people open it up because they want to see the new listings every week. Some people open it because they want to see the closed sales. Some people open it because they just want to see the picture I put up top. Some people want to see whatever the article is right. or whatever's for sale or whatever my featured property is. And so what happens is it has a bunch of different angles mm -hmm. that people could be interested in. And some people are interested in that, some of this. And so I try to embody just about anything somebody would want, you know, if they were interested in something on the beach or in the area of Dutch Shores Orange Beach into an email to where, you know, I don't just have closed sales on, on one week and then just new listings this week. I try to have everything. That way, anybody that's addicted to that information you know, they're like, I want, I got to see the new listings every week. When yeah. he sends it out, I look at that new listings every week or the closed sales or whatever. And so it just keeps them coming back. And so it's kind of like McDonald's, you know, they've had the same price, you know, since they were, you know, since they were created. And I try to keep the email really the same so that they know what to expect. Yeah. So I started it in 2007. Mm -hmm. Every Wednesday since 2007, this thing's went out. When the market crashed, it went out. When, you know, when I crashed and lost everything, it was still going out. When I changed companies, it still went out. When I was going through some of the hardest times of my life, you know, it was still going out. So beyond the email, which is, 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 is once the set, that system set up, the database is made, um, and then it's just you spending an hour each week, like handcrafting that message for that week and, and, and updating with the, the relevant data. How else would you contact me Joe, who, who we just did a deal, and now you're sending me your email. What does you think? And either uh, are you calling me every six months or quarter? When you make your calls, is a lot of times a call to those previous clients, and if so, how often is that done? Just checking in me uh, per your script, saying, "Ricky, when just I'm checking building my business, uh -huh. I'm never calling them ever again. Okay, ever again. They get my email every single week on the same day yeah and so they're like oh my god this dude is consistent hard working dependable knowledgeable mm -hmm. the email builds the relationship for you right yeah you don't have to do anything else if the email doesn't win them over there's not much you can do because you're too busy calling new people okay because you're building your business i see if you waste that phone call on an old person on an old client when you're still in your building stages mm -hmm. Then you 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 know if you do that and like one's not going to hurt you, but if you do a bunch, yep. then that could be a dent in, in your future you know five years from now business. Okay, you see what I'm saying? So, but when you get to my level where you're already past the building stage, now you're in the maintaining and continuing to grow stage. Now most of my calls now are past clients and past people you know in my in my circle because there's thousands of them. And you know, I, I can't even call all them back. So that's a different set of dialogue because of their familiarity with you and just wanting to chat for a minute. Not really. Not really. I mean I mean the initial call is, is a certain way and then but after that it's really the it's similar. That it's it's when you make so many calls, you become skilled in like reading people on the phone. Mm -hmm. And you start to get in the flow of people with different personalities, and you start to realize there's only a handful of different scenarios when somebody answers the phone. You know, they're happy, sad, glad, busy, whatever. Right. And when you when you start when you start when you made it a calls where you realize there's only so many different scenarios, mm -hmm. then and you know what how to handle each different scenario, you know, then you just get to where you kind of just flow with it. You right. know, it's all the same. I mean, even when I call past people, I'm still saying, hey, you know, how you doing? And you know, it's gorgeous down here, uh, whatever. So you have to go with the flow of right. the call. And it's a chicken and egg thing. People want the skills to make the calls, to be really great at making calls before right. they ever make calls, but you can't until you make the calls and practice. So let's take this five steps back to, to the initial neophyte like myself who says, look, we've never really went into the time to solicit or call or or, or, or break ground into a new area. So, so, uh, you got to have the commitment. I have to have the commitment. How often is that? Once a week, or you know, you need to, to make calls. Yes, you need like, to do a hundred calls a day. Okay. All right. So a hundred calls a day, basically. Hey, Joe, you're you're 
uh, a house down the road sold, you know, obviously this, you know, you yeah. be more conversational than that. Just want to let you know the market's really good right now. I think that especially right now with the sales being like the market saying, hey, the market's really great. House just came on the market. Is there anything I can help you with? Is that kind of what you would want to do? Basically, basically. I wouldn't get too wordy right there. Okay. Because you start sounding like every other agent. Okay. You know, you start sounding like a salesman instead of a family member. Okay. See, I mean, you wouldn't say that to your dad, maybe. I don't know. But, <laughs> but you know what I'm saying? Different right. personalities are different. But so keep it succinct. I'm like, hey, a house down the road sold, didn't know if there's something I can do for you. Or a house down the road listed, didn't know if there's something I can do for you. So you may not necessarily give them the data like that. You're app. interrupting their day. Yeah. You gotta keep it. You gotta keep it short. Okay. You, and they don't. They don't care about all that stuff. Okay. You're, you don't. You're not trying to do. If this is going to be a long term relationship, then you have plenty of time to let them know what the market's doing and, and you know all that stuff. Right. We're not there to explain everything right now. Okay. We're there to to make some statements and questions to get some feedback and hear. We're trying to read them to see if our personalities match up to where we have a working relationship for the future. And you apply that to every property owner you're calling, that thought process. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I don't I'm and I'm not asking if they want to buy or sell. See the, the thing is is you gotta you gotta sound different than all the other agents. Right. Because if you don't, then they're gonna just it's a red flag to them. They're gonna automatically just shut you down. Okay. You know, if, if you if you sound like if you ask them, hey, they know if you'd be interested in selling. Mm -hmm. Uh, no, I told the last ten agents I'm not interested, you know. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, but if you call them and say, Hey, a house down the road sold or listed or went under contract or whatever, I didn't know if there's something I could do for you, that I kinda that throws them they that makes them think. Right. You know, who is this? Okay. What are we talking about here? I guess you. you know what I'm saying? And then they're like, Well, help me with what? You know, like I don't know about it or selling real estate or something, you know, I'm just calling to see if there's something I can do for you. No, no, we're good, we're good, you know. Which they're gonna say every time. Sure. Then it's like, okay, well look, is there an agent in the area that you work with? No, okay, well look, I'm sure at some point you're gonna to want to do something. I'd love the opportunity to work with you when that day comes. So when you transition from that, and mm -hmm. you mentioned that and I've seen it, um, what is generally your feedback? Is it do you, are they usually at least receptive to answering or Yeah, they're they, gonna say yes or no. Okay. I mean, they're gonna say, yeah, yes, I do, or no, I don't, you know? Okay. If it's like, yeah, it's like, okay, cool, I hope you're in good hands. If there's ever anything I can do for you, let me know. Hang up, move on. Good. You're free qualifying now. Is the door open for a relationship? Like, is, is the door open, you know? Is, is there already a relationship in place with an agent, or is the door open for me to become their guy for the future? Right. Because they're not interested now. They're never gonna be. You know, less than 1% of people will do a deal the first time you talk to them. You're going to run into people that want to do deals. Yeah. So you do deals with those people. But the people that don't, which is enough, which is 99% of people, right. well, 10, 20 or 30% of those people are going to like you enough to do a deal they're just not ready. Okay. That's where you got to capitalize on that group for the future because you're talking to them anyway. Like, you're talking to them anyway. Why not go ahead and get their email and start doing the thing? And time's going to go by anyway. Yeah. So they're going to eventually decide to do something. Why? Why you? Sh there's no reason why you shouldn't be the guy when they decide. So once you've got that and you're in their email, and then that's the contact from then on for you, or do you? Yeah. Feel, or you, and so that person that you might not have done a deal with, but if I said, "No, Ricky, I know you like, you know, uh, I'm I'm not ready to do anything right now. Sure, here's my email. That I see your weekly posting, uh, your weekly email. That's is that uh, going forward the the gist of our relationship or would you call up on me again uh, you know a year from there no go, i'm going to send you an email you call me if you need okay something. okay that was what i needed unless to you want to go have lunch next week are you busy what are you doing next week let's go have lunch right meet face to face i mean since i'm going to be your agent for life let's go ahead and put a face to face <laughs> and did you do that quite often when you started what go to lunch with people you know sometimes yeah i mean you know i, I don't know I mean, you know i got you i do lunches here and there you know i got you i mean i have a lunch with a client anytime i can so, yeah. so, so all of this will be covered, and and, th and the reason why I'm here today, Ricky, is I wanted to meet you and actually shake hands, say hello, and it's also uh, to go to the uh, the formalized training, which was a 90 day. Uh, I think I read a 90 day plan. I read a lot of information, and I'm starting to get a little confused. But there's a 90 day action plan. Yep. There's two 30 day jump starts. Yep. One is around daily, weekly, monthly habits. And yep. this other one is about how to handle the winter time when the market slows down, yep. which is the same philosophy as when the market crashes. Then you got all the phone scripts, 
Then you got an online course. All I created all this. Okay. This is all out of my brain. Right. And then you got videos. You got the videos, man, of me making calls. Three videos of me making live cold calls in my office. Um, how I do the weekly report, tutorials on all the stuff, how to do Facebook custom audiences, how to tomorrow we're having our um, our coaching session. I'm gonna be uh, going after old expireds, mm -hmm. like how to get the numbers and then what to say, how to capitalize on them. You know, and how how to handle old expires because really that's a gold mine. And that's your that's after your podcast. Tomorrow that's I'll do the podcast at four, four, and then I'll switch over to the to the coaching session. And that me. is for your your uh, members of your yeah. training team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then that session will be recorded, you know, and it'll be put on the website. So a, a lot of the content on the website is old uh, coaching sessions that we did. Mm -hmm. They're high. Yeah. I mean, they're super high. They're it's it's crazy like how good all the stuff is on there but um you know at the end of the day i don't care if they can sign up or not you know i'm gonna make a million and two million dollars a year you know selling real estate yeah so I, I really don't care i know that what i do works and i know that people like it and i know it's just a matter of time before it catches on and goes like mainstream mm -hmm. and so i just i'm just in the stage where i don't care you know like uh and i, I did care when I first started, I wanted signups and stuff, and I was desperate, and I did things. But that was good, because I got the ball rolling, and I got some momentum going with, the, with those members. And now, um, I'm just in a place where it doesn't matter to me, and, uh, you know, I want to continue building my real estate business, you know, and the coaching business at the same time. Um, I'm fixing to start getting paid to speak. That's going to be exciting, and uh, so, you know, and I really think that uh, eventually all this will branch into just general sales for any industry. Yeah. Because it's really the same. It really, I mean, it really can help people in a lot of different industries. You know, this whole you know relationship over transaction mindset. Right. You know, long term thinking for short term gains. Yeah. You know? Because it's just the, the second you quit worrying about the deal and you start thinking about long term value to mm -hmm. your customers is the moment deals start falling in your lap. Well, here, here's where I have a, 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 here's where I have the disconnect that maybe, you know, it's, it, it, we, we say uh, we want to foster relationships. It's, it's not about the deal, it's about yeah. the relationship. I totally get that. Mm -hmm. But that's where I have the disconnect on. So the, the relationship is, is a phone call, an introduction, an established that, that I don't have an agent, you can be my agent, and then a weekly email. And you're saying that's enough. I think that's where I, I, yeah. I, I my, that's where I'm not doubting. Obviously, it works millions to work, but it just seemed to me like um, maybe that was a little impersonal. But if it has to be done that way, I mean, that's the just email is impersonal. Yeah, I mean, I'm just asking. the email is is spent. You spend an hour on it every week. Yeah, and they know it's a bulk email, right? But it has your personality in it. Like it has a little bit of you. It's not. It's not how to cook shrimp at toupee or what color to paint your walls in, in, in November. I guess right. It's not that all that that I see a lot of agents sending out that automatic right. Thing, yeah, right? Yeah, it's yeah, not yeah. that. Yep. Yeah. It's real stuff. They're drawn to the content, right? And you just happen to be the one giving them the best content. So they're they're not drawn to you really, right? They're drawn to what you're providing them. Nice right, but the byproduct of that is that they're going to deal with you when they decide when they say, okay, now I'm I'm ready. You know, I'm gonna call Andrew. Mm -hmm. You know, so okay. another part of it is, is in the in the emails, I'll do giveaways. I'll say reply back for you know, I'll, I'll do a thing about an awesome restaurant, and I'll say reply back. You know, all you gotta do is reply to this email for a chance to win a fifty dollar gift card or something. Right, right. And I'll get hundreds of people to reply back. You know, and I'll pick a winner. You know, and then I'll announce the winner and stuff, and I'll do stuff like that too. You know. Um, like uh, that little paragraph I did on the post yesterday about how I don't care if you buy or sell anything. Mm -hmm. That was my main little article thing on my weekly report I did today. I you know, Wednesdays are my day that it goes out. That was that was my little article thing. Was I don't care if you do anything. I just want you to know I'm here. You know. Okay. And and you know, it, it's like people are gonna buy or sell. Mm -hmm. They want to buy or sell. You know, there's hundreds of thousands of properties. They're going to do it. It's all timing. You're going to run it like just the fact that you're calling 100 people a day, mm -hmm. you know, and you're approaching it as 
differently than all the other agents. You're going to stand out. You're going to run into people that are thinking about doing stuff. I guess. You know, like I closed on a million Monday. <clears throat> it was two deals. I have a year, 615 and, and 460. The buyer of the five house, I showed them property five years ago. They didn't buy anything, but they started getting my email, right? So they called me like four months ago. It was like, we're, you know, remember us? I was like, yeah, they're like, we're, we're thinking about it again. Um, and they already knew what kind of buildings they wanted and stuff. Right. So we started working with them, boom, got it under contract, boom, closed it Monday, right? And then that was five years ago. I showed them property, they didn't buy anything. I don't think they could afford it to buy anything. But I showed them property anyway because I'm about to relate. I didn't care if they bought, bought or sold. I wanted them. I didn't care about the deal. I wanted them. And then I cold called her about three years ago. She owns a Phoenix. And she didn't want to do anything. You know, whatever. Got her email. Da, da, da. So she calls me about four months ago. And her two sisters want to buy a bigger condo for them. So she kept her Phoenix, you know, whatever. But they bought this Kareem together. And so that was from a cold call from three years ago, right? So the thing is, is five year ago client that couldn't afford to buy anything that I that I valued. So right? in five years, your only contact with that guy was your weekly email. That's it. Okay. So so the 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 guy uh, showed a property. You know, I saw value in him because he's a human, right? And then the lady that didn't want to do anything three years ago. Okay. So those are two deals that I just closed on this week right from three and five years ago so okay. three and five years ago though when i was plowing all these calls and meeting all these people that are closing deals now i was also selling a lot of stuff off those calls at the time yeah that year you know i was crushing it then and it was it was the sheer volume of contact and that's that's the linchpin of the whole economy. yeah yeah at the end of the day so, so that sheer volume of, of contact is a just by the sheer volume of calls, you're going to have a now deal. Just by the sheer number of people, like right. yeah, we just started talking about selling this because we have to move to my mother's house or whatever. And yeah, come see us. So that just by the sheer number, but you're also planning in uh, contacts into your database that will um, produce. Yeah, even if it's not hundred percent, even if you're getting two, three, four, five, ten of these at some point in time. You know, it's beneficial. And if your only follow-up to them is to help them when they ask for help and be the month, the, the weekly email that you're going to do and put some heart and soul into to make it a little mm -hmm. different, then that's not a hard step. The hard step is dialing and talking. Here's the hard thing. You make 100 calls, you get two email addresses, and nobody wants to buy or sell. And it took you two hours if you have a dialer and all day if you don't. Right, and so you just spent a whole day making 100 calls, and you got two email addresses and no potential leads. Yeah, that's the hard part. People do that, and they say, "Screw this!" Right, right. But if you did that every, that's huge. Sure. Like, like that every day is number one agent in your area in five years, mm -hmm. because two a day is ten a week, the forty. That's a thousand a year. Right. A thousand a year. No, five hundred a year. A thousand in two years. 2004 years. Mm -hmm. If you got 2,000, if you got 1,000, if you got 500 property owners that you've actually had a voice to voice conversation with, that you had this little thing and you sounded different and they saw value in you and they started getting this weekly email from you, five, even 500 is huge. Right. You're going to be busy at 500. 1,000, 2,000. 2,000, you're like number one. You're like number one in your market if you get that far. Right. You see what I'm saying? Sure. Off two email addresses a day of a phone call session that was worthless to most people and they didn't see value in it. And so they stopped doing it after the first day because mm -hmm. they're like, man, I'm not getting anywhere. I got one email address. Let me ask you this. Do you think um, a lot of those uh, in your client database, what percentage do you think are out of the area? Um, a lot of them. Yeah. Because I'm in a, a second home market. Sure, 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 yeah. sure. So how do you think it would... Uh, uh, the same. You think there's no difference? Say, like no me, difference. If I wanted to focus on the Eastern Shore residential. No difference. And you even though... You say the same thing and you would do the same exact thing. Exactly. Period. The only difference is, is they're local. Right. That's it. You might see them more. Mm -hmm. That's it. You might be able to actually have lunch with them. 
You know? Okay. That's it. Okay. That's it. No, no difference. I mean, wanting to help and being professional and being consistent, dependable, and hardworking and knowledgeable is across the board. Right. Like, there's, I mean, I don't know what you could do differently. You know? No, uh, I don't know. I, 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 I mean, a guy said, a guy said, uh, an agent said, uh, you know, how many open houses do you do and stuff? And I'm like, none. You know? And like, if, if an owner, I'll do maybe one a year when I get that owner that owns a house in Peninsula that's like really wants me to do one, you know, then I'll do it for them, right? Mm -hmm. But like I told the guy on the, on the feed on Facebook, if if I were in a market where that was the ordinary, where, where open houses were just, that was just a given, like when you list a property, they're, you're expected to do an open house, mm -hmm. I'm going to be the open house master. Yeah. See, see, the, 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 the mindset of like just kind of help you, that's it, right? All the little extra stuff like to adapt to different markets, that, that's on you guys. Okay. I mean, you got to figure out what differences in like what works and what doesn't work. See, see, see here's the thing, man. What, what, I, what I'm like worried about is the fact that you haven't tried anything new right. in well, all this time. Yes. Well that, well, that bothers me because, because you can't succeed if you if you're not an adapter. Yeah. Like if you're not somebody who is willing to try new things, figure out what works, what doesn't work, and 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 then okay, out of these ten things, two work. So I'm gonna keep doing this. I'm gonna throw yeah. those eight things away. I'm gonna try eight new more things. You know more. You know new things. Yeah. And, and uh, maybe I'll get a third thing that's really working, and then a fourth, and then a fifth. But you've just done the same thing. Right. Which which is well. You know, in all fairness, and that's why I'm here today. You know, that's why, yeah. that's why I drove to here because I knew that I know I need to. I'm just making you aware that like I mean, you need to have a mindset of I'm going to try new things all the time. So yeah. I can figure out what works. You can't do the same thing Agreed. all the time. 100%. But, but you got to, but you also have to be good at, at, at seeing what works. Yeah. Because a lot of stuff that works takes time. Yeah. And so you can't take the first week of something. It's like making calls. You know, you make a hundred, you get two emails, you think this doesn't work. A lot of people say this doesn't work because I didn't get a deal today. Right. Well, I mean, it's the same thing with uh, with. I mean, but it does work over time. So you got to be good at differentiating that thing that like didn't work the first time you tried it versus it'll work over time versus the thing that didn't work the first time you tried it that you can see probably won't work over time. Yeah. That's tough. Yeah. You know? Well, th th there's no question about it that what you've done works. I mean, there's not, there's, yeah. You can't argue that. So yeah. so there's no. Uh, so it's a pretty simple equation, you know. Yeah. It's like it's like you tell people that are that are that are out of shape or that want to get healthy. It's not a it's not a it's not a, a magic formula. It's not wraps. It's not any of this stuff. It's simple diet and exercise. Mm -hmm. Those fundamental things are are, are are unchanged. So what you want is somebody to lay out a plan, saying this is what you diet, this is what you eat, yeah. and this is what you exercise. Because mm -hmm. those two. And so what I'm asking and what what I want to do is see. I know I need to make. I can't rely on that sphere. I know I need to make contacts. And now we know specifically it's property owners. Mm -hmm. And this is the script we're going to use and this is what we're going to do. So yeah. that's that's it. That, yeah. That's that's why I'm here today. That's it, man. You just do the script over and over again. You and break yeah. relationships. You have the email. Right. And then everything else is secondary. Yeah. Social media is secondary. Uh, postcard is secondary. Right. Uh, sphere of influence is secondary. Right. All that stuff is secondary. To this right this is it this is how you build business this is your diet and exercise this is All how you build supplements. i get that I, I, i'm 100 this, this is the meat and potatoes of the real estate business yeah. you know all the other stuff is just cherries yeah you know i just started doing social media this uh, in 2017 i didn't even do social media in 2016 at all mm -hmm. you know i sold 100 properties in 14 15 and 16. and that's without a presence on zillow or, or yeah i still don't have a presence on zillow yeah so you, 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 so you, you, so you, you've never no cared about it. So it all goes back to what you said, and, and I'm not arguing with you at all. I want to do it, so I'm here. Is that it's about making the calls and building a database. Period. The reason why technology won't replace us is because there has to be that voice to voice yeah. contact, and, and 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 technology just can't do that. It just can't have voice to voice communication with, and consult people of the market and stuff like that. It just can't do it. Okay. So they try to figure it out. Maybe one day they will. But for now, they can't. It's, it's, the, it's the difference maker of between us and bookstores and us and travel companies who have been wiped out by technology because they're, you, know, you can go online and just book a trip or buy a book, right? But you can't buy a house.
because a house is several hundred thousand. It's a big decision. Mm -hmm. You don't know the market. There's a lot of moving parts. If you've never done it before, you have to be consulted. There's a lot of stuff going on. Right. So there has to be that voice to voice conversation, you know, to consult through the market and what to do and how to do it. So because of that, it, it makes it to where we're in such a, you know, a great place, you know, yeah. because, because we have that, but, but we got to understand it and then we got to take advantage of it and just have these voice to voice conversations, you know, yeah. with people and create that relationship and get that rapport going and show them that you really care. You don't care if they buy or sell, it's whatever, because you're working so hard to build that database. And, and see, at some point, people lose the, they, they get lost in the quality. Mm -hmm. You know, they want to give quality service. They just want to give so much quality. Mm -hmm. They spend all this time, you know, you, you know, they spend a lot of time on a little bit of people when they need to spend a little bit of time on a lot of people. Right. And that's what the email does. I spend an hour and, and it goes out to 10,000 people. And then boom, I've contacted 10,000 people in that hour. I've spent a little bit of time on a lot of people, right. and now I'm able to keep on doing my thing, whatever I'm, whatever I'm working on, whatever deal I'm trying to do, or this or that. You know, so you have to be, at some point it's gotta be about quantity, not just quality. Right. You know, get quality when you're in front of people, like I'm giving you right now, but when, when I leave here, I'm going to get quantity. Right. And I'm trying to figure out where my next, you know, where my next hustle is, how am I going to like sell a million properties today? I think that, that that's part of that. Why I got, I got caught up on a little bit, you know, was uh, really, really, really uh, taking care of the folks that, that, that I've done business with. Uh, that just maintains your plateau. You got to do that, right? But that doesn't take 40 hours a week, 50 right. hours a week. You know, that takes 30 minutes a week, an hour a week. Now we still got. We still got 49 hours, 39 hours, 60 hours, whatever, how much ever you work to work with, yeah. to do stuff, to build your business. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you, you know, when you when you expand that and you make that excuse that I'm just giving everybody that quality, you know, and you're just and, and the, you're using it to procrastinate sure. on yeah. The, yeah. the things that really yeah. build the business. You there's know? no there's no question that there's absolutely no question that that I I learned bad habits, and it happens to a lot of, I learned bad habits in 2010. Mm -hmm. Specifically in 2010, sellers weren't selling uh, in all the foreclosures, so there was a buyer market, especially for a new agent where you're naturally gonna be leaning towards buyers. Mm -hmm. Well, that's really who was doing a lot of the buying, and so I fell into that who? Uh, routine of dealing with buyers. You know? Who was buying? Uh, people buying foreclosures, first time home buyers. Right, who were they? Uh, friends, friends, acquaintances, my prior networks from my- I'm saying generally. Agent. As far as just friends, family. property owners. No, these, these people. Are, I'm just telling you. No, the people. Property. I, I understand it. Right. Dirty. I'm saying generally. Right, right, right. Property right. owners. But that's when the market I'm, crashes. You call property owners and say, See, "What doing, do you want to buy today?" I was doing it totally backwards. I understand. And 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 and, and, and that was not uh, uncommon or unusual because most new realtors are going to be helping buyers first. It's just the nature of it. Well, when that's all you do, and you make a living, and, and then you get in those bad habits, that's what I'm trying to break today. Yeah, that's yeah, why I'm here today. Yeah, yeah. Is is seven and a half, eight years of of uh, buyers, and then an occasional listing from friends, family, people who knew me, trusted me, whatever. But but uh, I want I want to I want to rip that apart. I want to rip all that up. I wanna, yeah. I want to blow that up, and 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 start and go. Okay, this is like day one. I'm, I'm, and I should be even better at it because I've got experience, I've got knowledge, I understand how the process works, you know, uh, as far as actual transactional of the mm -hmm. selling of real estate, you know, the moving parts there. Uh, but I want to rebuild that bit mm -hmm. and say, okay, this is what you used to do, we're scrapping that. Or you can do that in your, in your office. You can do it, but it only takes an hour a week. Right, is right. what I'm saying. Right. You got another 39 hours to do yeah. much more productive stuff. That's what I want to do. You right. gotta spend that hour because you gotta keep those relationships going, or you're gonna lose them to dust. Yeah, you know. And then you gotta spend an hour to do that report, you know, because that's that's your baby. That's your baby. Yeah, that's got and, all, and all of that's laid out step by step, so it's it's almost dummy proof. Okay. It's dummy proof, dude. <laughs> it's laid out where if you will just do it, yep. you know, and uh, if you'll just listen to those videos, like when you're driving to work, mm -hmm. when you're driving home. You know, listen to those videos and, and get and, and get inspiration and understand the mindset behind everything and what we're trying to do. Um, you know, doing that, listen to those videos and, 
and coaching calls and stuff to and from work mm -hmm. and if you're working out and stuff like that and really just take in all that content that's on there you know and put all those puzzle pieces together and fit it into what you're already doing with your with your sphere you know um really to me everybody's your sphere you know like even the people that you called that didn't want to do anything that are now getting that email they're your sphere too mm -hmm. the people that bought and sold they're your sphere to me, it's just one big sphere. Right, I got you it. Know? And then your job is, is to keep get that sphere as big and big, big as it can be. Right. You know, that's the thing. It's a snowball. Okay. Because the sphere get, keeps going, and then they start sending you business and past clients and referrals, and it just kind of starts growing on itself a little bit. But you got to also keep it going. You know, with with the new people. So, so your uh, your 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 people that you have that are participating now. Mm -hmm. um, and 170 or so. And, and, and how much of those are local and how much are across the nation? There's only a couple that are local. So you got anybody on Eastern Shore? There's a girl named Eva. Uh, Eva. I think it's her name. Mm -hmm. I don't think she's big time, but she's uh, she's super nice and she's selling stuff. Um, I think she's going to be big. Mm -hmm. um, let's see, I had a guy named Dustin uh, for a little while. And Dusty. Is is he? I assume he's mm -hmm. in your mm -hmm. program. Yeah, very good thing about him. Yeah, he's a good guy. He's a good. So guy. he is a success story that came in. Is he? Because he's followed your program, yes. Mm -hmm. And now he's doing well, from what I understand. He sold. Let's see, what did he do last year? I mean, he sold over ten million mm -hmm. last year. You know, it was like his third year, second year, or something. Yeah. Last day. Yeah, I see his sign all the way up even in the. Outside of this area, he was uh, he was he was with another company, and then he came here. I played high school football with him. Is that right? And then we uh, and then we just kind of connected when he moved up here, and then uh, you know, we just kind of just you know, I've helped him. So, and he would tell you the same thing at the uh, the Genesis is just making the calls. Oh yeah, yeah. oh yeah. So it's full. It's really foolproof. I mean, I, I can't emphasize that enough. It's just Listen, like, man, real money. estate is win-win. Yeah. Like, you can't lose. If the market crashes, you win. Because right. buyers are buying foreclosures. I mean, you, you win no matter what. When you're making your calls, if you do a deal, great. If you don't, you pick up two email addresses. You won either way. It's just putting in every day. It's just doing it every day for years until you get where you want to be. Yeah. I mean, it's the bottom line. There's no secret. 